Hi there, welcome to this build of a 49 inch wingspan Diamond Demon. A lovely vintage model from the late 1930s. And we're building this from a great set of plans from Ben Buckle in the UK. Now in the last video we got the wings covered in Doculam, which is essentially a, a, a laminating film. It's not an aero model product. As I said, it's used for laminating documents, but it does stick and shrink lovely. It hasn't got a high shrinkage like a lot of the covering films, but if you put it on carefully, you can see you can still get a really nice finish. And it's stuck to the under camber of this wing really well. Now in this video, we're going to be covering it with tissue. And that's going to be really interesting and really nice to see it suddenly start to get some colour. And I'm going to be using this Japanese Asuka tissue and I'm going to be using two different colours. We've got the orange and the blue and these are really nice colours. I, I really like these. Now the underside of the wing which we're going to do first is going to be totally orange. And we're going to just lap that up just a little bit onto that ball nose. We're not going to have a great deal of overlap. And then on the top, we're going to have orange on the back section of the wings. And we're going to have a band of blue that comes along the leading edge. And then that's going to come to, can you see that? I think, yep, to a, a diamond shape or a reminiscent of a diamond that comes back here and then continues just on the diamond section on the back of the fuselage. So that'll be blue and blue along the front. Now, I've done quite a bit of preparation in just trial and error to see what these colours go like if you put them together. And it's been quite interesting. This is just a, an old scrap wing that I use as a, a test bed. And you can see here I've got the orange which has gone lovely, it's kind of semi-transparent. I've got the blue, nice and vibrant. Now when I put this on, I had to have a little bit of an overlap, or I wanted to have a little bit of an overlap. And you can see it produces a dark line where that overlap is. So I thought, well maybe if I put on just the orange and then put the blue over the top, I won't get the dark line and it might look better. But actually, when you put the blue over the orange, it goes a little bit muddy and you lose that kind of vibrant blue colour. So it was quite a useful process doing this because now I need to think, yeah, I like that dark line, that's fine, joining the two. But I need to think how it's going to be on that central diamond section so I don't end up with just dark lines on, on the joints. I need to be uh, smart, if you like, about where I have the joints. Once I, well, I won't tell you how I put this on because we'll see it in the video as we go. I thought it'd be worth making a quick comment about this Japanese Asuka tissue, which I get from Free, Free Flight Supplies in the UK. And if you have a look in the description below this video, uh, I will provide a link to where I got this from. Now this comes in 600 by 450 sheets. It comes folded but the folds just disappear once you start putting it on. Now, it's not long enough to do the whole wing. So what I'm gonna do, or not that way anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on at an angle like that. And I just need a little bit of an overlap and that will allow it to come into this central section here. So in all intents and purposes, it'll look like a single sheet, but there will be a little bit of a join here between the two halves but you won't see that on the underside that is because it'll be on the fuselage so if I put it across like that I will get a piece big enough now in uh, first uh, impressions is it's a little bit wasteful but then I'm going to do the tail which I can get out of these pieces or at least part of it out of these pieces. So nothing will be wasted or very little and it will be good to get this done in a single panel. This stuff does cut quite nicely but you need to have pressure on a good straight edge and a nice sharp scalpel to get a clean uh, cut with it. 
If you try and use scissors I find it doesn't work as well but a scalpel and pressure and it does a nice job. Right now I've got these two panels cut roughly to the right size. Now I think there is a difference with this tissue. I think one side is slightly brighter and uh, perhaps slightly shinier than the other side. I guess really it doesn't matter as long as you, which way up you have it, as long as you have it the same, uh, be consistent. I've got that slightly brighter, shinier side up. I've cut these nice and straight so that we will get that a nice straight edge and then once I've got these panels on I will put a piece down the centre. I've got an overlap of about half an inch, 15 mil, something like that on the back and also on the tips. Now on this front leading edge here I want to just bring it just around the, the actual edge itself uh, just enough to overlap from the when it comes in from the top so just to give us about a quarter of an inch overlap at the most don't need a great lot I don't think so that is the one critical thing to get that front edge right the back and the, and the tips I'm just going to pull that down and varnish that down and then I will trim it once the varnish has dried so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray the panels with water. I will, I'll probably do just one first and see how that goes and then do the second one. But I'll spray them with water and I'll leave it five or ten minutes to let it really soften up, take in the water. I'll probably mop up the excess with a bit of a cloth and then I'm going to brush it. I've got a brush somewhere. Here we go. I've got a brush. So once it's had time for the water to soak in and soften it. I will just make sure it's brushed flat. I'll get all the excess water off. I'm going to leave it again for about five or ten minutes just to settle and then just check there's no bubbles of water under the tissue or air bubbles. Flatten it out and then I'm going to polyurethane it. So uh, I haven't got the polyurethane <laughs> to hand with me but I'll show you that when I come to the stage. It's just a water-based polyurethane. Right, well let's get this tissue on. As you can see the first thing that is important to me anyway is to get the wing supported, comfortable. I've got a cloth on this end so it doesn't move around that much. So I'm holding it as still as possible. Now I'm going to spray this with water, just check it's lined up. The more accurate I can get it as I spray it, the better because I don't really want to move it around once it's wet if I can help it. Uh, it will move, you can lift it up, it's quite a strong tissue but um, and I haven't ripped it yet but there's a first time for everything so I'm gonna because I've lined up this edge now I'm just gonna put on just get my squirter working uh, there we go just going to put on a little bit of water along this front edge and this is designed to hold it so it doesn't slide if I start spraying everything it might slide so I'm just going to because we've got quite a good pressure with the um, the tissue on that on that front edge uh, what brush shall I use Right, now I'm going to wet the rest of it and I'm going to give it a fairly liberal soaking as you can see. Front edge as well. And I'm now going to leave that for the best part of probably 5-10 minutes to just relax a little bit and, uh, and then we will get the wrinkles out and just check this front edge yeah that looks good so then we'll get the wrinkles out and the bubbles so back in 10 right well this is well wet now and nicely soaked 
So I'm just going to go along with the brush and lift it up. Uh, uh, sorry, and, and, and brush it down. If necessary, we can lift the tissue up to get any big wrinkles out. But I would prefer to brush it if possible because it's just um, a risk of <laughs> risk averse, and it will go better, I think, if I uh, if I don't pick it up. Um, but I may may need to. You see, I'm just carefully working it. Um, I don't think there's any rush really to this process. You know, we can take it nice and easy and just in our own time just to get it done right. Right, well you can see now that that has got most of the wrinkles out. I did have to lift up this end here to, uh, to just get out some of the big wrinkles. And to be honest, if you just carefully go at it with a brush, very gently, it's surprising what will come out. I don't know whether that's stretch in the, uh, in the tissue or whether it's uh, we're just laying it down better. But uh, what I'm going to do now is let this sit now for another five or ten minutes and then just come back and check it again. And if it's all fine, then we'll start, uh, we'll start putting the polyurethane on it. Right, well, we're going to get the varnish on, I think. This is looking pretty good. There's a little bit of a bubble here, which I'll just... or well, not a bubble, but I think we've just got a little bit of water under the tissue. So we'll just give this another brush down, but to be honest that is, I'm quite pleased with how that's looking. And it's not too wet, I mean I can put on a, a tissue and just take off some of the water. But I <laughs> need to be really careful I don't lift it up when I'm doing this. This end bit is actually the wetter bit. I guess it's flowing downhill maybe with the, uh, the, the angle of this. But it's a water-based polyurethane, so I don't have any concerns about putting it on if this is damp. And we're gonna put on several, several coats. There's still a few little wrinkles here where it's lifting up because of the dip of the doculab and the curve of uh, the leading edge but hopefully that will all sort itself out. You see I've tucked the, uh, the, the tissue under there and I just got this stirrer and just tucked that under there to create a kind of a bit of an edge. So now I'm going to put on the varnish. This is what I'm using. Hopefully that's in focus. It's a water-based gloss varnish. They do do a matte version. I'm not 100% sure the matte version is fuel proof, but the gloss of which this is, just check, yes, is definitely fuel proof. And it, it's a milky kind of white colour, but it goes on lovely. Uh, it's, it's quite nice to use, and I've used this on several models in the past, um, diesel and petrol, but not glow. And or maybe I'll put it there so it's not in the camera's way and uh, I'm just going to brush this on now nice and gently not too thick actually let me just wipe off the water on the doculam here and I am going to brush it over very slightly onto the doculam and um, I am going to put a piece over that as I said earlier. Now when this first goes on it looks a bit bubbly and a bit lumpy but trust me it does smooth out. So I will get on now and carry on doing this and uh, we'll see how it looks. Just need to be careful doing this not to uh, 
not to lift up or put wrinkles oops, in the um, in the tissue. Let's put this on. You get these kind of little bubbles under the surface. You can just see them around there. If you just slowly and gently work the varnish, it uh, it will just get rid of those. Though you'll end up with a few little marks and that, but hey, it's a vintage model. <laughs> but we can get rid of a lot of the uh, those little bubbles. I think they're probably just bubbles of water that form and we're just dispersing them really. And with this being a water-based um, polyurethane, it's probably just diluting the polyurethane a little bit. So it's just kind of mixing in with it really. Right, well I think we're more or less done on this. It's worth if you saw I put uh, polyurethane on three bays or a few bays and then I would go back after it sat there a while and just get those little bubbles out. There are still, like there's a mark there, a little bit of an imperfection there which aren't going to come out. And I think actually some of these might be the, the film where it's still a little bit opaque. But um, you know, it's it's a tissue model. It's uh, it's not meant to look <laughs> meant to look perfect. There, that's my excuse. But I'm just going around now and just checking this before I leave it. And we need to leave this uh, about four hours or over four hours. It says on the tin before we can do a second coat. I probably I, pr I probably won't do a second coat until. I've done the whole wing and then I'll give it a second coat because I would like to perhaps get the top surface on and get that done and then do the second coat making sure the edges are all sealed. Right well I'm just finishing up the second side of this now and then I can leave it overnight. This side is drying nicely it looks really good it's gone uh, clearer Hopefully you can see the difference there, and but it's still slightly wet and tacky. It's been one, two, three. it's been over three hours since I put the polyurethane oops, on uh, on that side. But because the tissue was wet, it does take longer to dry. The following coats, uh, which there'll be, I think probably two more coats, it will dry a lot quicker. It's just, as I say, because it's got this water in it, it, uh, it just takes a lot longer. So once I've got this side done, I can leave this overnight. And then tomorrow, hopefully, it'll all be nice and um, we can start to do the, uh, the top surface. Still got this little bit to do here, which uh, I don't think I, I'm not going to get that done today because this won't be dry. So we'll, we'll see whether we do that tomorrow or leave it for another day. So, well, this is all dried and looking absolutely lovely on the underside now of this wing. And late last night before I went to bed, I just finished this central section so that it'd all be dry for today so I could get on and start covering the top because I really wanted to get this lapped around. But you can see that it's absolutely lovely hopefully that doesn't uh, glare too much with the lights and I've trimmed it around <coughs> excuse me I've trimmed it around on the back here and uh, where we lapped it over on the edge is nice and flat and straight so we're ready to start covering on the top and I've been cutting out this morning some little bits of tissue for the wings to start this so we'll take a look at that and see how we're going to do this kind of design on the top. Okay, for this design on the top now, I've, I'm wanting it to tie in with the diamond shape that is on the back of the fuselage. So I've cut myself a template just to show the angles of that and the size of that. And with that in mind, I've cut a couple of pieces of the orange tissue which I'm going to put on like that. I think that's more or less just a very slight quarter of a uh, 316 
few mil overlap there onto this central section and then this will go on there something like that more or less and so we've got that these two angles coming down at the same angle as this central section on the fuselage. I'm then going to cut a blue piece on the front which will also follow this line and to aid me in doing that I've cut myself a kind of a template because I want to overlap the blue just very slightly onto the orange here and to follow that line so like I said I've done a template there so we can cut that at the same angle while getting this nice and parallel a nice good join along there once we've got the orange the blue I'm going to do a blue central section that just fills this bit here and it will overlap just onto the orange and on the blue and it will produce a dark line like we saw earlier on that template there's no real way around this I did think about trying to do one piece that came right to the centre and having the dark join down the centre but I'd still end up with dark joins here tissue isn't really long enough to do that so I think we'll just have to have that dark line and to be honest it'll look fine so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get one of the sides on get that polyurethane when I'm happy that's not going anywhere I'll do the other side and, um, and get then get the templates cut for the front I think once I've done these two pieces I'll probably have to leave that overnight to make sure it's nice and dry before I then tackle the blue and just a very quick comment about this how it's gone on because it curves down like this I've ended up with a little bit of a crease here and you can just see that a little bit but I'm just been working it backwards and forwards very lightly and this tissue does stretch it doesn't stretch much but it has got just a small amount of give in it when it's wet like this so if you just move it backwards and forwards I, th I think I've almost got that out now there's just a little bit so if you get a crease like that don't sort of give up on it but just just work it very very gently but you do need to be careful and uh, if we end up with a little bit of a a crease in it well that's that's the way it is but um, just working it a little bit seems to really help right, well I've now got these rear upper panels on and they've gone on really nice no wrinkles at all well maybe a, a, just a very slight one there that you can just about feel but you can't really see it but I'm really pleased with how, how this went on now it feels dry but I'm not going to do anything now until tomorrow to make sure that it really is absolutely dry because when I put the panels on the front I'm going to be spraying water again and I, I don't want this lifting or causing any problems bubbling I, I don't know what could happen now I've cut the two front panels for here and here as I said following that line up from the diamond on the back of the fuselage and where's the diamond there we go and that will be on the back of the fuselage as blue and then we'll have this central blue panel going up the middle I'm going to leave this now till tomorrow as I said and then we'll get these panels on and I think these will go on fine right, I'm just doing this front edge now and I've wet it I left it for a good probably 15 minutes to try and soften it as much as possible and there's a slight issue with because this it's dipping at the front and lifted up by the ribs and this tissue doesn't give a great deal and I was going along with this, a smaller paintbrush because I thought well, I can get that between the ribs but I found that actually putting that aside and using the bigger paintbrush that I've used all along was flattening that down more consistently and I'm just constantly working these um, these wrinkles at the front here and there is still a little bit of a wrinkle developing here and there that comes back but I find the more I work it the more it sticks down you can see at this end the wrinkle still in I haven't done that 
this is the end I've done. There's still a little bit there, a little bit there, but I'm hoping they will go. If I just keep working it, I think as the tissue's drying, maybe it's um, shrinking very slightly, but it's probably just that the tension, surface tension, or the dampness of the tissue is holding it onto the, um, onto the, uh, onto the film. So I'm just going to carry on working this, but it's uh, when you <laughs> when you first start it, it's a little bit stressful because you think, oh gosh, I'm not going to get these wrinkles out. It's not going to fit right. I think I'm going to end up with one here, possibly because of the change of uh, direction. But it is coming good. So uh, fingers crossed, it will be right in the end. Right, well I think we've almost got wrinkle free except for just here and hopefully that will come out when we start putting the uh, polyurethane on and, and, and working that a little bit more. You can see I've got some clamps on the end here. I find that really useful for just pulling the tissue down uh, and so it doesn't, uh, doesn't spring back up. It just helps in getting these, these wrinkles out. I think I still need a little bit more water on that end just to uh, just to work it a little bit, but I just thought I'd share this with you about these these clamps Right now I've got this more or less done I think and I think it's more or less wrinkle free uh, I Just keep looking at it and very occasionally I just see a little bit that just starts to uh, Not really wrinkle but just perhaps lift because it's under a little bit of tension being fit to the to the actual profile of the wing but that looks pretty good and I think that's going to dry really nice so I'm going to stop fiddling with it in a second and then I'll just keep an eye on it until this starts to go off and if anything does appear to wrinkle which I don't think it will now I will just have another go with the brush and uh, but that, that is looking really good I'm really pleased at one point I thought it was going to turn a little bit ugly Right, well, I've now got this blue on both sides and in the end it went on lovely and really nice. I'm really pleased with how it's, uh, how it's gone. You can see it's hopefully there's no wrinkles at all except for just here where we get that change of angle for the wing tip and uh, similarly on that side. But you know, it's such a small insignificant uh, Bit, you have to really look at it but this is lovely and dry now so I've cut myself a piece of tissue for the central section now I think this could go okay but it could be really difficult just around these uh, these bends here so we'll have a go anyway and if it's a problem I've got a plan B for how I can put it on in a couple two or three pieces with very small seams that perhaps won't show, but we'll try this whole piece first. Well, that went on a lot better than I expected. I haven't put the polyurethane on, this is just held on with the water that I've kind of just dried off a little bit, but you can see it's gone on lovely and smooth. In fact, it was probably easier than this leading edge, which was a surprise. I've put a little bit of tissue on top here on the leading edge because I think where I was brushing it I just th I thinned it a little bit on this edge and you could see it a little bit brighter so I've just added a little bit of tissue on top and I don't think that's really noticeable. You can see the the join lines here and they get thinner which is a shame I, I hadn't cut that a little bit different but it's very difficult to judge how uh, this is going to sit once it's got wet and sat down, but I think I'm being a bit picky there on myself So I think that looks great and uh, I'm going to get the uh, Get the polyurethane on now and uh, make sure this doesn't go anywhere in the process So we'll have a look once it's done Well, I am smiling because it feels so good to get this covering finished and that central section the last bit went on really well and uh, it was actually easier than I thought it would be and um, it was easier than these leading edges with all the dips between between the ribs now oh, and we can see the underside with that lovely under camber there's been no lift at all off the ribs there I'm really pleased with uh, with the look of it 
Now it's all of it has got a single coat of polyurethane. Now I still need to do two more coats and I've been putting gloss on, it's not glossy at the moment because it was on the wet tissue. The next coat will bring it up to a gloss finish but I'm toying with the idea of using a matte polyurethane just wondering whether that might look a little bit nicer but I need to test the matte so I'm going to do that at a later date but it's, it's nice just to get this covering finished. Now so far, before I started the wing weighed 100 grams and I've just weighed it and it's 135 grams so it, it's put on a bit of weight but it hasn't put a lot and, uh, and yet we've got a really strong and durable finish. Now we really have to see what this looks like on the, uh, on the actual plane itself on the fuselage because of course if you remember we've got this coming down which is hopefully going to tie in with the diamond on the back of the fuselage and if we just rest that on you can see how that will uh, play out once we start to cover the fuselage which is uh, down the road a little bit yet. Now I know this video has, has turned out quite long, longer than I, I would like but I try to make videos that are not just showing you what I've done but showing you how I'm doing things and the mistakes I make and hopefully you can learn and find your own path in doing covering uh, from watching them. So I, I'm trying to provide information that's, that's helpful and hence they end up being a bit longer sometimes. So I, I'm sorry it's so long but hopefully there's information in there that you find useful. Now the next video I think I need <laughs> is going to be doing the covering on the uh, the tailplane and the fin. Oops, I can't put that on without, without coming round. And um, I still haven't thought of a design yet, so I need to give that a little bit of thought. But this has been so intense doing this over the last five days, I'm going to do something else for a few days and just take a little bit of a break while I think about whether I'm going to put two colours or one colours on the tail and the, and the fin. Anyway, I'm drawing this video to a close now and I hope you found it useful and interesting and uh, please come back and see how we get on in the continuation of this lovely 49 inch wingspan vintage Diamond Demon.